Earth's atmosphere. Section one, Earth's atmosphere. Every day you walk outside and you look up in the sky and you have to decide what you're going to wear for the day depending on what the weather is. Weather is a condition of Earth's atmosphere at a particular time and place. But what is atmosphere? Well, Earth's atmosphere is a layer of gases that surround the planet and makes conditions on Earth suitable for all living things. The atmosphere contains oxygen and other gases that you and other living things need to survive. And in turn, living things can infect the atmosphere. The atmosphere, which is full of atoms and molecules of gases moving all around the globe, is constantly changing. And it is moving into and out of living things, as well as moving into and out of the land and moving into and out of the water. Now, Earth's atmosphere is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and many other gases, as well as particles of liquids and solids. Nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere, making up 78% and is essential to living things. Oxygen, which is the second most abundant gas in the atmosphere at about 21%, is used by plants and animals to help them turn food into usable energy. Oxygen and nitrogen together make up 99% of the dry air, and the other 1% is made up of carbon dioxide, argon, and small traces of other gases. The atmosphere is able to trap energy from the sun, and it keeps most of Earth's surface warm enough for water to exist as liquid on Earth. The atmosphere is also important because it protects living things from dangerous radiation from the sun, as well as preventing Earth's surface from being hit by most meteorites, which are chunks of rock from outer space. Now, the composition of air that we have discussed so far was for dry air, but the air is not dry at all because it contains water vapor or water in the form of gas. We cannot see water vapor, but it plays a very important role in Earth's weather. Clouds form when water vapor condenses out of the air to form tiny droplets of liquid water or crystals of ice. And of course, if these droplets or crystals become large enough, they fall as precipitation in the form of rain or snow. Now, the part of the atmosphere that acts like a layer of sunscreen is called the ozone layer. Have you ever noticed a sharp, clean smell in the air after a thunderstorm? Well, this is the odor of ozone, and it's formed when lightning passes through the atmosphere. Ozone is a form of oxygen that has three oxygen atoms in a molecule instead of the usual two. Scientists continually study the ozone layer because it is vital for keeping organisms on Earth safe. In 1985, scientists made a discovery about an enormous hole in the ozone layer over the entire continent of Antarctica. They discovered that a human-made compound found in chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons were destroying the ozone layer. In 1987, these chemicals were banned in many countries around the world, and since then, the loss of the ozone has reversed and it's almost mended. Scientists are able to um, have weather balloons go up through the atmosphere to check on conditions. Now, if you were to follow that balloon, you would go through four main layers of the atmosphere, which are classified according to changes in temperature. These layers are the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Now I know you're looking at this image and saying, but there are more layers here labeled, and that is because there are sub layers, and we're gonna discuss that in just a bit. Now you live in the inner or lowest layer of Earth's atmosphere called the troposphere. Tropo means turning or changing, and the conditions in the troposphere are more variable than in any other layers. This is where the weather of our planet occurs. The depth of the troposphere varies from more than 16 kilometers above the equator to less than nine kilometers above the North and South Poles. It also contains almost all of the mass of the atmosphere. And if you were to increase your altitude as you go through the troposphere, you would find that the temperature decreases. On average, for every one kilometer increase in altitude, the air gets 6.5 degrees Celsius colder. The stratosphere extends from the top of the troposphere to about 50 kilometers above Earth's surface. The word strato means layer or spreading out. Now you would think if you were to increase altitude in the stratosphere, that would continue to get colder. But in actuality, the upper stratosphere is warmer than the lower stratosphere. Why do you think this is? Well, the upper stratosphere contains a layer of ozone, which we discussed, and this is a three atom form of oxygen. The ozone absorbs energy from the sun and that energy is converted into heat, which warms the air. Above the stratosphere, there's a drop in temperature and this marks the beginning of the mesosphere. Meso means middle and this is the middle layer of the atmosphere. 
The mesosphere extends from 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers above Earth's surface and is the coldest part of the atmosphere with temperatures near negative 90 degrees Celsius. The mesosphere protects Earth's surface from being hit by most meteoroids, which are chunks of rock that are coming from space. If you ever look up on a starry night and see a shooting star, this is usually a trail of hot glowing gases that are the remnants of a meteorite getting burned up in the mesosphere. Now we are reaching the top of the atmosphere and the air is very thin. This outermost layer is the thermosphere and extends from 80 kilometers above Earth's surface or Earth's surface, I'm sorry, and blends into outer space. The term thermo means heat, and this is because even though the air in the thermosphere is very thin, it is very hot, measuring at 2100 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, 21,000 degrees Celsius. Now, can you think why this layer is so hot? Well, that's right, it's the layer that is closest to the sun. So when energy from the sun strikes the thermosphere, it hits those nitrogen and oxygen molecules, converting energy from the sun into heat. Now the thermosphere is divided into two layers. The lower layer of the thermosphere is called the ionosphere and extends from 80 to about 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. In this layer, molecules become electrically charged. And because of this charge, these particles are now called ions. Radio waves are able to bounce off these ions and bounce back to Earth's surface so communication is possible. And on the other side, particles from the sun are able to bounce off this ionosphere as well, creating the brilliant light displays of the aurora borealis, also known as the northern lights. The outer layer of the thermosphere is called the exosphere, and this extends from 550 kilometers outward for thousands of kilometers. When you make a phone call or watch television, the signal may have traveled up to a satellite orbiting in the exosphere and then back down to your home or phone. Now it may seem to that air has no mass when you go outside. However, air consists of atoms and molecules. Therefore, it has mass. And because it has mass, it also has other properties, including density and pressure. A force pushing on an area or surface is known as pressure. Air pressure is the result of the weight of a column of air pushing down on an area. Right now, where you sit, the weight of the column of air above you is about the same weight of a large school bus. So why aren't you feeling crushed sitting there? Well, the reason is that molecules in air push in all directions, down, up, and even sideways. So the air pushing down on the top of you sitting there is balanced by the air pushing up as well. Now, if you were to move from where you are sitting now and hike to the top of a mountain, which is much higher in the atmosphere, then the air pressure would decrease. And this is because you have changed your altitude or elevation, which is the distance above sea level. Air pressure decreases as altitude increases. And as air pressure decreases, so does density. If you've ever traveled to somewhere at a high altitude and you weren't used to it, you would notice that you would get out of breath very quickly, maybe if you tried to go upstairs or you tried to run. And this is because as the density of the air decreases, there are fewer oxygen molecules to breathe in and you are taking in less oxygen with each breath. This is why many people who hike mountains such as Everest always have to take extra oxygen with them. All right, this is a great place to take a break and it's time for you to show what you know. <laughs> 